from Hollywood, Romance. Romance, transcribed stories of love and adventure, of comedy and crisis, of conflict and human emotion. Today, the story of an interplanetary survey of New Mexico. It is written by Charles B. Smith and stars Virginia Gregg in The Man from Venus. On the day that an astronomer in Cleveland announced that the Earth and Venus were only 26 million miles apart, that was the day I decided to marry again. Bobby and I were living in New Mexico on the small ranch his father had left us. Why I decided to stay on there alone, I'll never know. Except that it was a wonderful place for a growing boy. Our nearest neighbor, Henry Fuller, lived over a mile away, and our only contact with civilization, besides the party line, was the highway we could see from the house. Well, the morning it happened, Bobby'd gotten up before the chickens. Henry Fuller was going into El Paso for the day, and he was taking Bobby with him. Uncle Henry? Yeah, Mom. Last time he was over, he asked me to call him that from now on. I gotta get my hat. If you don't stop rushing around, you'll be worn out before you get back here. Okay. Vicky. Vicky, you stop barking, you hear? Morning, Louise. Morning, Henry. Come on in. I'll give you some breakfast. Ain't got time for nothing except coffee. Bobby ready? <laughs> Since five this morning. <laughs> me too. Yes, sir, I've been looking forward to this day like a bull looks forward to spring. Henry. Oh, I forgot. Widow Barwick don't like them kind of jokes. And stop calling me the Widow Barwick. It makes me feel like I'm 90 years old. Well, you ain't getting any younger. Besides, everybody in the county's called you that for a couple of years now. Of course, you know what you can do to make them stop. I know. Now, you sit down. I'll get your coffee. You want me to pack a lunch for you? No, I'm going to eat in the cafe. Say, Louise, uh, I've been doing a good deal of thinking here the past couple of days. Oh? About this here ranch of yours and about your boy. You know, you've got to think of his future right along with the future of this old scrub you're stuck with. I know it better than anybody else, Henry. Boy growing wild as Bobby needs a man around to show him the rights from the wrongs. Same as you need a man to advise you on the value of your property. I know what it's worth, Henry. Yeah, I reckon you do now. But if I was to buy that acreage on the south of you, it'd sure drop. You wouldn't do that. No, 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 of course not. Besides, if I did, I'd buy your place as soon as you set the date. Give you a fair price, too. Henry Fuller, you can't blackmail me. Blackmail? I ain't doing that. All I'm trying to do is to get you to marry me. I told you last week, and I tell you now, when I'm ready to marry again, I'll let you know. All right, Louise. Ain't no need to go getting on your high horse. Say, this is hot... I'll pour it in my saucer to cool it. Uncle Henry! Yeah, boy? I'm all ready. Well, now, boy, I reckon I got bad news for you. What? We ain't going. We ain't going? Nope. <laughs> oh, now, Henry, why do you want to go teasing him like that? Boy, you sure fell for that one. Yes, sir. Couldn't resist doing it, neither. Where you're dressed up like a dude, new hat and all. Ain't it pretty? We picked it out of the mail order catalog. Yeah, what'd it cost you, boy? Three dollars and a half. We seen you coming. Could have bought a bag of chicken feed for that. Here's a list of things I want you to get me. Henry, I'll pay you when you get back. Well, it's up to you. But you know, you really don't have to give me any money at all. You know that. And I know what it'd cost me if I didn't. Oh, Besides, now. Besides, you're doing enough for us, having your hired man over here every week. Well, got to keep an eye on you, don't I? You do. Well, boy, let's be at it. Yes, sir. Bye, Mom. <laughs> After they'd gone, I finished up the breakfast dishes and had started to make the beds when I saw him. He was walking in from the highway, tall, straight like a soldier. And he was wearing a suit something like one I'd seen on a high-altitude flyer in a picture magazine. It covered his whole body, and he had a large glass bowl over his head. He didn't look dangerous, but you never can tell, so I started for the phone, and then I remembered... 
We weren't too far from White Sands. He could be a flyer who'd had an accident and was coming here to call the airfield. I was still wondering what to do when Vicky started after him. Here. Vicky! Vicky, you stop it! Oh! Your dog is far from courteous. Oh, I know. But whatever you did seems to work. He's never run from a stranger before. What'd you do? I spoke to him. <laughs> well, when I speak to him, nothing happened. Now, that is because you do not know his language. I do. Oh. Well, I... Would you mind if I removed my helmet? It is becoming quite heavy. Oh, no, not at all. You just make yourself at home. Thank you. Ah, well, that is much better. <laughs> I imagine it would be. Would you like to use the phone now? The telephone? What for? I thought you might want to call for help. Help? Am I in danger? Oh, no. I only thought you'd like to phone White Sands and let him know you're here. White Sands? Oh, yes, the rocket testing laboratory. No, I have no desire to fall into the hands of those men. But aren't you from there? From White Sands? Oh, my, no. <laughs> well, where are you from, Dallas, Oklahoma City? No, I come from much farther away. Oh, where's that? The planet you Earthlings call Venus. We will return to romance in just a moment. A lot of those collegiate wallets are a good deal fatter than usual these days, thanks to summertime jobs. And as a result, quite a few young men and women are finding themselves tempted to forget about school this fall and keep on with the job. Finish college. Learn more now. Earn more later. And now for the second act of Romance. <laughs> If anyone had ever told me that I'd believe a man who walked up to my front door and announced he was from Venus, why, well, I'd have thought he was crazy. That's just what happened. Of course, at first I tried to kid him out of it, made out like I knew he was joking all along. But he was so sincere, as a matter of fact, I couldn't help but take him seriously. Well, we stood there for a couple of minutes, then, and I still don't know how it happened. I heard myself inviting him to come inside. Of course, you know, I wouldn't think of asking you in if you were just an ordinary man from around here. Yes, I know. I suppose I feel all right about it because you're so special. Now, you... You just make yourself at home. You sit anywhere. Thank you. I've got some coffee on the stove where I can make you some lemonade. Which would you like? These are liquid refreshments, are they not? Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Barwick, but I must avoid all liquids while I am away from home. Oh, I guess it is best. A change of water never did agree with anyone. Say, where'd you learn to speak our language so well? In school. You mean they teach English in the schools on Venus? Only at the school for interplanetary scouts. Is that what you are? A scout? Yes, this is my first trip to your planet. How do you like it? All right for a visit, but I would not want to live here. The people are barbarians. Oh, now, please. Barbarians. This is the unanimous opinion of the men in my graduating class. Well, whatever gave you that impression? Last lunar period, 24 scouts, exactly like myself, were set down on Earth to approach and speak to people as I have with you. Of that 24, seven were called press agents in four different languages. Ten were believed to be actors working in science fiction films. Four were thought to have lost on something called a quiz program. And my best friend had a door slammed on his foot and the words, don't want any, shouted into his face. Oh, dear. People just don't have faith in anything anymore. Not all people, Mrs. Barwick. Only the people on Earth. Well, I'm glad to hear that. See, I sure wish my son was here to see you, but he's gone to El Paso for the day. Yes, I know. He'll be back around eight. Why don't you stay for supper? 
I am sorry, but I have much work to do, and my time is limited. Oh, that's too bad. You'll sure wish he'd stayed home. It was my wish that you be alone this morning. Oh? Why, for goodness sake? So that I might question you. Question me? About what? About the life of an earth woman. Your hopes, fears, desires. Oh, you mean like a survey? Well, I don't know. I've never been one for talking about myself. I know, but I can be very persuasive. Relax, Mrs. Barwick. Look at me. Now then. Oh, I... I feel kind of dizzy. That will pass in a moment. Well, I'm... I guess I'm no different from any other widow. I'd like to get married. Guess I will soon. Marry. Oh, yes, I remember now. Marriage. The ceremony spoken by an elder which gives a male and female permission to mate. Well, I suppose you could put it that way. We tried it out some time ago and asked for volunteers from two of our universities to see if it would possibly work in our social system. What happened? Miserable failure. None of the students could understand why they had to selfishly spend their lives loving just one person when there are so many others eager to share their love. But let us get back to you, Mrs. Barwick. When did you first desire to leave your parental home? I answered him. I answered every question he asked me, no matter how intimate. And he kept at it all morning long, even while I did the chores. At the hog trough, he wanted to know about the boys I dated in school. At the chicken coops, about my father. At the corral, he asked me about my husband. All kinds of questions, and I kept answering that's what I never could understand, why I ever answered him. Then, in the barn, after he'd finished on Henry Fuller, he stopped. Here's your corn, Freddy. Freddy's one of our pets. He is cursing you. Cursing me? Why? Because he does not like corn, yet you feed it to him every day. But corn's good for him. He hates it. But look at him. He is eating the corn because he has no choice except to go hungry. Like you, Mrs. Barwick. What? You are marrying that man, Henry Fuller, but you do not love him. No. Really, I... I can't understand why I'm telling you all these things. Why marry Henry, Mrs. Barwick? Well, I told you, Bobby needs a father, and I... I'm getting tired of running this place by myself. Would it be difficult for you to find another man, one you could love? Yes, very. Why? Well, because in the first place, I can't ever get away from this ranch, and in the second, Henry's the only one who's come over here courting me. Then you are exactly like the pig. It is not a question of choice. You are taking what is available. Oh, you be careful now. I don't like to be talked to that way. If it were possible for you to select a husband, what kind of man would you choose? Oh, a romantic person. A man who'd like to travel and... Who'd make me sell the ranch and move to the city with him. And It'd be good if he was a widower with a small child, so he'd understand about Bobby. You are not concerned with physical attractiveness? Yes. I'd like him to be taller than I am and nice-looking, have a good steady job, and be about my age. I am sure that would not be too difficult an order to fill. I'm sure you've never tried filling it. Besides, I left out the most important item of all. Which is? He must love me very much, right from the first. Perhaps it can be arranged for you to meet such a person. Oh, no, I'd be embarrassed to death. But why? <laughs> well, because a man with those qualifications could have almost any woman he wanted. He wouldn't be happy with an old second-hand model like me. He'd take one look and run. Not if you met under the proper circumstances. And what are those? A place and a time where you and this man would have the opportunity to become well acquainted before anyone or anything interrupted you. Well, it's nice thinking about it, but it'll never happen. I thought you still had faith. I do, but not about myself. Perhaps you should have. Well, Mrs. Barwick, it is time for me to go. Oh, couldn't you stay till Bobby gets back? No, my work here is completed. Well, you'll probably get just as excited listening to me tell about you. Take my advice. Do not tell anyone about me. Why not? They will not believe you. 
They will laugh and make you very unhappy. Oh, um, what are those specifications again? Well, for a husband, you mean? Taller than I am, live in the city, a widower with a child, and have a good job, and love me very much. I shall see what I can do. I watched him go out toward the highway, and then I went on into the house. When I looked again, he was gone. It was about quarter to eight when I heard Henry's car turn into our road. I walked out to meet them. Vicky, here now, you stop that barking. Hi, Bobby, you have fun. Yeah, you're darn tootin' we did. Had us a real wingding, didn't we, boy? Yes, sir, sure did. You had your supper? Yep, bed on the road. Well, come on inside. Bobby, I want you to go straight to bed. It's way past your bedtime. Okay, I'm tired anyhow. Well, what all did you do? I'll tell you about it when you come to kiss me tonight, Mom. All right, you go get yourself ready for bed. <laughs> Bobby behaved himself. Oh, fine. He's a mighty good boy. Sure is a pity he's got Not to be brought... Not now, please, Henry. I've had a big day myself. Oh, what happened? Cow gets sick, some of the stock get fever? No, nothing like that. What was it? Well, a man from Venus was here today. Man from where? Venus. The planet Venus, Henry. The planet? That's right. A man from there, from that other planet, was here? Right, and this room talking to me as big as you are. <laughs> oh, now, Louise. It's the truth, Henry. I'm not joking. <laughs> Don't give me that. Why, a man from Venus. <laughs> but it's true he was here. Believe me, it's true. <laughs> if he comes from another planet, how'd he get here? In a spaceship. Do you see it? No. But I know that's what he come in. Yeah, how do you know? Because he told me. Oh, Louise. And he knew things about me. He knew my name before I told him. He got it off the mailbox. He told me you wouldn't believe me. Yeah, that was a safe guess. But if he was from Venus, what did he come to see an old widow woman like you for? To ask me some questions. About what? About my life. It was all for his survey. His what? Survey. He and some other scouts are making a survey of the women of Earth. <laughs> Oh, Louise, you poor old widow woman. Somebody sure made a fool out of you today. Henry, get out of here. What? I'm never going to marry you, Henry. I never want to see you again. Now, wait just a minute, woman. I've got money tied up in you. It cost me $2 every week for my hired hand to come I'm over here and... I'm sick of hearing about your money and the way you're always thinking you can buy me. I'm tired of your crude jokes and your dirty manners. Now, you get out! You're going to be sorry about this. Not me, Mr. Henry Fuller. Yeah, I was going to keep this a secret. Figured on telling you when we got married. But now I'm going to enjoy this. I bought that South Acreage today. I've got your little scrub surrounded. Which means your property's worth about a third of what it was before. Now we'll see who comes crawling to who. Get out! Mom? Yes, Bobby, I'm coming. You and Uncle Henry didn't have a fight, did you? No, no. A little disagreement. Oh. You brush your teeth? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, all right. Now then, you tell me about your trip. Well, Uncle Henry let me go to a movie while he took care of his business. Oh, that was nice. What was the movie about? Well, it was about another world where everybody rides around in a rocket ship and shoots at each other with ray guns. Mm. Science fiction picture, huh? Oh, I guess so. And they had some people on the stage, too. Oh? Yeah, it was the first time that movie ever had been shown anywhere. And all these people were on stage, except the main one. Well, where was he? Nobody knew. They said he was supposed to come in dressed all up in his spacesuit like a man from Venus. But the truck his rocket ship was on must have broken down or something, because he never did show up. Bobby, did... Did they say where he was coming from? Yeah, right from Hollywood. That truck with the man in the spacesuit must have passed right by here, Ma. Maybe if you'd been out in the porch, you would have seen him. Yes, maybe. Yes, maybe I would have. Well, you, uh, you go to sleep now, Bobby. Okay. Good night, Ma. Night. An actor. A very good actor. Oh, you fool. <laughs> Vicky! Here, Vicky, stop it. Hello! Who, who's there? Uh, my name's Appleby. I've, I've had some car trouble. wonder if I can use your phone. Why, 
Yes, come in. Thank you. The phone's right over there. Do you know how to operate one like that? Oh, well, frankly, no. I'm afraid I've lived in the city too long. Well, then I'll do it for you. What's the matter with your car? I wish I knew. I just bought it a couple of weeks ago. Had it all checked over yesterday, too. It's been running like a top till I got right in front of your place, and then it stopped dead in a doornail. Mm. The motor won't even turn over. That's strange. Yes, it sure is. Well, I'll call Bill Stout at the corners. He's about the nearest mechanic around here. Mom? Go back to sleep, Bobby. Does your husband know anything about cars? No, I'm a widow. Oh. <laughs> I sure hope I can get on my way tonight. How far are you going? Home. Kansas City. Oh, you're a long way from it. I usually am. I travel for my company. Mm, do you like it? Oh, sure. Who wouldn't? What's the matter? Doesn't she answer? No. Your phone must be out of order. I'll try again. Uh, how old is your little boy? Ten. I've got one just a year older. No? Yeah. Sure are fun. But they're tough to raise when you're left alone with them, aren't they? Yes. Are you, uh, are, are you a widower? Mm-hmm. My wife died seven years ago. Oh. Well, I, I guess it is out of order. It's just my luck. How far is the next town? Oh, good 20 miles. Well, you just point the direction and I'll start walking. I want to get some sleep sometime tonight and I can't sleep in a car. <laughs> no, tall people never can. Uh, before you go... I've got some coffee on the stove. Wouldn't you like a cup? Well, I guess I could use it, all right. And how about a nice thick piece of apple pie with some cheese on top? Oh, no. Please, wait a minute. I don't want you going to any trouble. Oh, I'm not, Mr. Appleby. Well, it looks like you are. No, really. I, I'm just keeping faith with a friend. It was true what the man from Venus or wherever said about two people meeting under the proper circumstances. Mr. Appleby had his cup of coffee and... Another and another, and finally he forgot all about his car. We were married a few weeks later, and we moved like I always wanted to, to the city. Romance is produced and directed in Hollywood by Anthony Ellis. Today's story was written by Charles B. Smith and starred Virginia Gregg in The Man from Venus. Featured in our cast were Richard Beals, Bill James, Charles Seal, Hans Conried, and Parley Bear. Musical supervision by Jerry Goldsmith. This is Roy Rowan inviting you to hear Romance transcribed next week at the same time. <laughs> A million people not bothering to vote because they think one little vote couldn't count, and America would really be in trouble. So a reminder now that your country can't use that one vote which does count next November unless you register according to the laws of your state or city. Make sure you're registered, and then next November, see you at the polls as millions and millions of Americans prove once again that one little vote does count.